I have 10 ways that you can vastly improve your life when starting over in midlife or at any age. Even if you didn't choose to or it's thrust upon you, it doesn't matter. 10 ways that you can surprise yourself and have an amazing rest of your life. So hi, I'm Teresa at Empower the Dream and I create videos for women in their midlife who are ready for more, more life, more love, more happiness, even if it includes starting over. So let's get into it. Okay, so number one on my list is to decide. To decide to take ownership of starting over, to decide to take responsibility. I say it like this because my big starting over was after divorce. Usually that, usually starting over is, you know, after divorce or some life challenge, right? So instead of blaming them, myself, judging the process, judging them, being a victim, I decided to just take responsibility for myself, for myself. I was part of the process that required a start over. I was ready to start over. I was ready to feel better, but the truth of it is I was fearful of it too. So by deciding to take responsibility, I got to lean in closer to me. I got to look at myself a little closer. I got to look at what I wanted what I could do better and to really honor myself and my time. Like life is important, life is precious. So I just decided to seize the opportunity and make the most of it. Not to be in any blame or shame or continue to live in the past. Living in the past will only hurt your confidence, put you in a downward spiral make you feel unworthy at times, like a failure. There's not going to do any more of that, right? At this point, I've already been through enough of that. So my first decision, my first step was really to decide to take responsibility for myself. I'm going to create my own life the way I want. <laughs> okay. Number two on my list is to take action. So during that step one, it required looking at myself closer, asking questions, you know, what do you really want? What's really going on here? Who are you? Waiting for an answer. And waiting for an answer is very precious time. So it's about listening closer to divine guidance, to our higher self, to our intuition. Sometimes messages step was to take action, but actually, I guess first it's to listen and take action. So listen to trust that and then to take action on it. And here's what I heard. I heard you need to go to church. So I was a church going young woman, girl growing up, but I got away from it and for a reason, but I heard that message loud and clear when I asked, what do you need? Honey, what do you need? Go to church. So I found a church that was close by where I, um, I chose to start living and I gathered up all my courage and I went to church and here's what happened. I walked in the door and it kind of had a great stage and, and they were singing the song, Benny King, lean on me. And when I walked into that room, for a moment, I thought everybody turned and looked at me. So I felt like the song was being sung to me, lean on me. And in that moment, I knew that my felt like I belonged. It was amazing. I'll never forget that moment. It was felt so good. And then that leads to number two. Number two, it, I'm sorry, this is number three. Number three is to follow the inspiration. So by going to that church, I opened up the door to receiving divine guidance, to receiving love from God, source energy, 
Um, and it led me to meeting new people and new opportunities. And that opened up the door to learning about spiritual laws. So it really wasn't like about going to a religious church and learning about that religion. It was a non-denominational church. And I chose that on purpose because I, I just felt like that's what I should do, which was the, the good thing because it opened up the door to spiritual teaching, spiritual laws of the universe. And through that, I learned that we create our own reality. And I thought, you know, law of attraction, those kind of things, law of assumption, all of that. And, you know, we don't always get what we want, but we get what we are. And we create our own reality. So then I thought, oh, so I created this mess, this chaos in my life. But at the same time, I also realized that I have the power to create the life I really want. If I created this, not even understanding that I was doing it, now that I've got the tools and the insight and I'm learning more and more about that, and to this day, it's part of my life, I'm going to create the life I want. So that led me to meeting all kinds of amazing people, going to events, um, reading books, of course, like just books, and I never read books before, so that was a new thing for me, reading all these books and just being like obsessed with this information. And I opened um, the door to hosting events even in my home um, around the time of the movie The Secret came out. It was a big deal, right? It was a big deal. It was a big deal for me. I had um, speakers come in, um, like um, well-known speakers that have, you know, books being sold all over the world, things like that. And for the first time I had group meetings in my home and people from all over the city. It was a beautiful time. I was in, I was kind of like in my glory for just a little bit. I feel like I had power again. So that was number three. And that was like following the inspiration. You never know where it's going to take you. Right. And then number four on my list is physical activity. I decided to like really jump into some strenuous physical activity. And here's why I did this. So my ex-husband was a marathon runner and that was a big part of our, our marriage, you know, his training and wrapping life around that schedule. And I, you know, and I would practice, practice. I would start running with him and, you know, just a little bit right here and there. And it was kind of fun. I enjoyed it, you know, but I enjoyed it enough that I wanted to pursue it. So I joined running clubs and I decided to train for a marathon and to raise money for the disease that my ex-husband had. And that was my way of, I guess, learning more about him, learning about what he was going through. And it was a healing process for me, right? So, you know, running a marathon is quite a mind, body, spirit process. You go through a lot physically, emotionally, spiritually to do that. It's a big deal. But you're also increasing your confidence, you're increasing your strength, you're increasing your endurance, you're putting yourself in a realm of things that not really that many people do in the whole scheme of the world. And so it was really quite amazing to raise money for a charity. That was a new thing. And they also then sent us to an exotic location, which was in Hawaii, to run the marathon. And so it was quite a big experience. It allowed me to not be so absorbed into the starting over of my life and going through, you know, some of the maybe loneliness or pain or heartache or change, right? but to choose to do this physical thing to learn more about him and myself. It was quite an amazing journey to do that. Uh, and looking at my list here, number five, number five, extremely important, self-love, extreme self-love. Seems obvious, but seems like that's kind of, or at least for me, was one thing that I was neglecting at times thinking about others, always doing something for others, taking care of others, you know, whether, you know, as a wife or a mom or a sister or a brother, right? But self-love is what I really needed. And I decided to practice that through, you know, through physical activity, yes, but through speaking kind to myself, not beating myself up, 
and advocating for myself, like saying no when I needed to say no and saying yes when I wanted to say yes. So it also included, this is kind of funny, singing love songs to myself. There were times when I turned on the radio and through the heartache of going through divorce, I didn't want to hear those love songs. You know, it either made me cry or pissed me off. <laughs> but I decided that I needed, I loved those songs, but I was needed to change the perception of the song. So they were singing to me and I was singing them to myself. So practicing extreme self-love, and that comes in lots of forms, right? Just some, just being kind, relaxing, being quiet, lots of ways, right? That was extremely important. Number six, face the fear and do it anyway. Well, that, that was included in marathon running. It was even included in deciding to take ownership, right? But also what I mean is, you know, there's times in our life where you know, we're going through our journey and what do I want to do or what's my purpose or, you know, I want to try something new, but always, maybe he being afraid of that, being afraid to travel or being afraid to start our own business or being afraid to, you know, go somewhere or do something that's out of the ordinary box that we live in. And so I decided to decide what some of those things were and to face the fear and do it anyway, which included getting a certification as a life coach so I can start my own business there because I was learning and growing and bettering myself and improving myself. And so all this that I was learning, I was wanting to give it back, right? Even though at the moment I was doing the life certification, I wasn't quite ready, but it helped to get me ready. And I also, through that process, starting started a networking group just for women. I wanted to be a circle of sisterhood, I know how it feels to feel alone as a woman, to feel unheard or unseen. And I wanted to just support other women. So I that too, so I started that group. And then through the to me to grow as well, unbeknownst to them. But that's the way it all works. All this weaves and weaves together and works amazingly together. But I've done, you know, courses for women, um, retreats, hosted retreats, all kinds of amazing things that were nourishing to my spirit, I was certainly afraid to do any of those things at first, but I just decided that I was not going to live small, to feel unworthy and to feel I didn't have any value. So the only way to do this, put yourself out there. Number seven, magical mornings is what I wrote here in my list. Magical mornings, to this day, that's extremely important to me. My mornings are my my precious time of the day that I just get centered with myself. Um, I do a practice meditation. That's part of that spiritual growth, those spiritual processes I learned that I talked about like back in like number three. That's part of that journaling. Journaling, get to know yourself, like kind of dump out some things out of your mind that are just cluttering where you can't hear divine guidance. You can't hear your own intuition. You can't get clear on what you want. So I just, journaling helps a lot with that. Being quiet, writing out my goals, visualization. My mornings would include all of these things. And honestly, it doesn't have to take that time, but it helps you to be centered with who you are, where you're going, and to be intentional with what you're creating in your life, intentional with what you want to manifest. Because through this spiritual process, everything you're manifesting intentionally or not. So I'm choosing from this point on to be intentional about it. And that was part of it. So magical mornings, whether it be 10 minutes or whether it be an hour, or it doesn't even have to be mornings. That's just what works for me then and works for me now too, is really important to put some process together for you that make you feel connected to yourself, connected to divine spirit. It's very important. Okay, we're my number eight, taking financial responsibility. Yeah, to so really support myself and my child. And I was able to cut a lot of, you know, wasted money. I was still, my goal was still to, to live abundantly and not to be afraid of it. And so I just chose to take classes and learn books and go to seminars and 
to be fully responsible for that, not to, not to feel like I couldn't have or to do without, but to set myself up for success. Um, number nine, feng shui. So feng shui is a Chinese method of uh, creating your life and to creating prosperity and abundance and love in your life. And so it was really fun. So I, I had, I think I just met somebody, one of my law of attraction groups. She was a feng shui expert and I learned about, you know, decluttering your home, going through the, the starting over process and learning more about me and up leveling myself and, cleaning out negative thoughts and choosing the mindset that was um, for the better because um, we're creating our own reality, right? That's part of my spiritual law of teachings, creating your own life. So I was fixing myself in a lot of ways, I guess you would say, but and cleaning out things in my thought process or my belief system. So do it your home too. So decluttering, which is, you know, all your past stuff, don't need to have that carrying around and being heavy. Everything carries energy, right? You don't see that, but it's a feeling. So cleaned out things, decluttered, and it's opening up space physically, but energetically for a new life, a new relationship, new life, new opportunity. So we messed up, made mistakes, we're failures, we're down ourselves lose our confidence and worth. We don't need any of that. And worrying, it's okay to plan and create your future, right? But worrying about it, you know, or thinking about it too much can cause fear and anxiety. But when you're just take the time, the precious time to be in the moment, which I think what helps is to just be in gratitude. That's part of the morning magic as well. But it's also at any time of the day, just when you feel yourself getting stressed out, worrying about things too much, or you feel or you catch yourself thinking about the, the past, just center yourself and just be in the moment. I think it's helped to just do breathing exercises and to just start maybe writing down all the things you're grateful for right now. Even what I found, and this is absolute 100% truth, I'm so grateful for, it's like saying thank you for that divorce. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't on my soul path. It was meant to be there for me to learn from it. And, and him as well. That's the way life works. We're on this journey. And so I'm so glad I seized the opportunity to go through it the starting over and go through the, the pain and the heartache, but I got to the other side and I'm so grateful. I learned so much about myself and about life. I've changed things so much. I, it's been the second half of my life so far has been the best. I have since traveled alone. Like I told you, run a marathon, done that as well as I was traveling, but also in the Mediterranean Sea Coast, I met my true soulmate, and who's with me here now? We've been married for a few years now, and that was quite a whole, quite an opportunity of love and abundance, and so much I could tell you about in another video. Yeah, and so yeah, so living in the moment, I guess that's where I was, is to just be grateful for all of that, and to seize the opportunity and the joy and the challenges that can help you to grow. So I hope some of these 10 ways to vastly improve your life going through a start over in midlife or any time have inspired you or gave you some ideas, encouraged you. Maybe you'll drop some comments of what you've experienced or what you've gone through to help inspire some others. And yeah, subscribe and we'll do more of these videos. It's for big dreaming women who are ready for more. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.